Hi, I want to tell you about rotational kinetic energy. Uh, just like we studied um, Newton's laws first for linear motion and then we went on to energy, um, we're doing that same thing here with rotational motion. So um, there's something called rotational kinetic energy. And so um, if you have a disk of mass m that is um, rotating with a, uh, an angular velocity of omega, um, it's got a radius r. If that is rotating around just along an axis, let's say it's just spinning on an axis, like maybe a motor or something like that, or a, a sander, or um, gosh, any anything that's just rotating around, um, it's got a it's got energy associated with it, energy that's um, that's associated with its motion. So that's why we call it kinetic energy, and be, because it's rotating, we call that. Uh, rotational kinetic energy, we abbreviate that K rotational or K rot. And it turns out that um, just like linear kinetic energy is one half mv squared, well, this is not one half mv squared, but it's one half, not m, but the counterpart to m in rotation is i. So it's one half i, and then it won't be v squared. Um, it, it would be one half i omega squared. So that is the equation for k rotational. Um, let's see what um, what that would be for this then. That for this particular setup, k rot or k rotational is equal to um, one half i. Now i for a disk is um, one half m r squared. You can get that from the table. Actually, in the back of your little pamphlet book, the table there's a table of um, rotational inertias. So that's I times um, times omega squared. Then, so that's what it would be for that one. Okay, so um, let's see how this applies to something like um, an Atwood's machine. So if we have an, an Atwood's machine, um, where say we have um, a pulley like this and it's attached to the ceiling like this and um, we have a mass here and then uh, that's a heavy mass and then a lighter mass here like that and this let's say this is the floor um, if this is m1 that's the heavier mass and this is m2 um, Let's say we wanted to know how fast this was going when it hit the ground. We would want to know how fast this is going just before it hits the ground. And let's say that um, this says this this the rotational of this wheel right here is um, let's say it's uh, it's got it that's a cylinder. So let's say I for the cylinder is one half m r squared. And let's say that it's got a radius r attached to that. So um, the question is, well, how fast will this hit the ground? Uh, one thing about this, um, before we would say that the, uh, the two tensions are equal to each other, but when this has mass, then the two tensions won't be equal to each other. Um, the, the two tensions won't be equal to each other because um, in order to get this to have an alpha that to, in order to get this to rotate this way you need for this tension to be pulling more than that one i'll say that again in order to for this to start rotating with an alpha and angular acceleration you need this force to be pulling down more than this than this tension is pulling down that's what causes it to have a torque okay so um, i'm going to do this problem with e equals e prime and so the energy it has at the beginning is all in potential energy. So it's m1 g times, let's call this distance h. So it's m1 g times h. That will equal the energy just before it hits. Now just before it hits, uh, both of these masses will have the same speed. So uh, we can put, we can say there'll be um, one half m1 v1 squared 
plus one half. This will be actually going the same speed. I'm going to call it V2 for right now though. M2 V2 squared. Okay, but we have two more energies. We have two more energies. You know what the two energies that we have to include here? Otherwise we are not going to get this problem right. Uh, one of them is that M2 goes up in the air. So that's going to be M2 GH. And the other is that um, this is going to be rotating. And so if it's rotating, then it's got its own rotational energy. So that's going to be one half I omega squared. Okay, now sometimes um, what they'll do then is um, you can relate the omega to the V. And this is how you relate the omega to the V. If you're a bug sitting right here, a ladybug, and then um, your friend is, oh, I'm, and you're, you have another ladybug sitting right there, and another ladybug sitting right there, and how about one right there? I would contend that all of those ladybugs have the same speed at any given time. So just before this is going to hit the ground, all these ladybugs have the same speed. Well, what's the point of that, of telling you that? Well, to tell you that the tangential speed of this ladybug is related to omega. If there's no slipping between the, the cord and the pulley, then you can replace omega with, you can replace that omega with V over R, according to the bridge equation. And that V is the same as that V is the same as that V. So all of those V's can be the same. And um, so, um, as you can see, you can solve. I won't fill in the details, but this is how you'd solve this problem. Um, as another example, um, if you remember when we had this problem, here's a meter stick. It's pivoted about this end. And if I wanted to know how fast it's going to be going through the vertical... When it comes to the vertical, it will have gained some omega. And so um, if I want to know just how much omega it will have at the bottom, how, how many radians per second will it be going, um, I can do this with E equals E prime. I'm going to say E equals E prime. And uh, this is the center of mass and when it gets to here, the center of mass is actually falling. If this is a meter stick, this is a one meter distance here. So it it's going to give up a certain amount of energy. It starts out with potential energy. So mass of the meter stick times G times a half of a meter. Um, so one half of a meter. That equals, when it gets to here, when it gets down to there... It's got one half I omega squared. And so um, once again, you can put in for I, for a meter stick, I about its axis, it's one third ML squared. Um, and so you can easily figure out what omega is using the conservation of energy for that one. Um... All right, I think I'm going to need to make one more video, so um, I'll see you in part two of Rotational Kinetic Energy.